We were just at Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and we spoke about lots of things. We always do Q&A. We also spoke about the announcement of the Analog Super NT. We were a little bit out of it, but I think we only rambled a little bit about it. We hit most of the main points, so we're going to do a little transition. We've been doing this lately. Transition. We're like grabbing at something. We're going to transition to Portland now, and hopefully the audio is usable. Woo! So, Ian, there was an announcement that happened just a couple days ago. And it seems fairly bet. inevitable, I guess. Uh, it's the Super NT by Analog. That's right. And the Super NT by Analog is a follow-up to the surprisingly popular for the price, um, Analog NT and Analog NT Mini, which were uh, you know, luxury NES clones that ran on field programmable gate, gate arrays. FPGA for short. <laughs> which um, are essentially, there's, there's no emulation. It's, it's a circuit board that acts as the original console would. Um, so it's the closest thing you can get to having the original console. And it allows for things like 100% compatibility. Um, they were machine tooled out of like solid blocks of aluminum. They were pretty. Um, I believe the first analog NTs were actually made from scrap Famicom parts. Uh, but it was the Mini that um, used the FPGA. And the neat thing about it is, uh, you know, they have four controller ports and HDMI out and all this, you know, almost now um, common sort of stuff. But because of the FPGA and the fact that it had an SD card slot on it, um, the person who made the board, uh, Kevin Horton, who also goes by Kevtris online and is a, a wizard, um, released uh, and jailbroke um, his own FPGA that's in the Mini, which allowed you to put ROMs for other games and stuff on an SD card and play them. Sure, so the, he had a bunch of cores programmed for 8-bit systems that he would just say, hey guys, you can load them onto the Mini NT. And then the people at Allen were like, we don't care, go for it. So it was cool. So then all of a sudden, you have a bunch of 8-bit consoles that you can use on the Mini NT. So in theory, you'd think with the Super NT, it would fall along the same lines as 16-bit consoles and backwards going back to 8-bit, you'd be able to put on here as well because this is much more powerful than a Mini NT. So, right, jumping back a little bit, the Super Nintendo NT is along, uh, the Super NT is announced, and keep in mind that the original analog NT was $499, and the Analog NT Mini was 450. I mean, I, I don't know who can afford that. Um, but I mean, hey, if you can, great, it looks awesome. Um, the Super Analog NT actually goes for uh, 190, which is incredibly reasonable for uh, an analog product. And they're doing four different color shells. I love color variants. Um, <laughs> I think, the, I think the Super Famicom one is very, very nice looking. I, I actually like the translucent one. But, um, so there's four different variants of it. Um, it, it is stated to have 100% reliability. Uh, lag free. Lag free. It's FPGA, it's not some sort of emulation going on. Um, HDMI out. To cut costs, they removed the analog outs. If you're buying one of these, I don't think anyone's using. They're not buying it for analog outs. There's no point anymore. I mean, plus at this point, uh, based on conventions I've been to, people I've spoken to, there, the, there's so many now Super Nintendo HDMI out clones that are on the market and coming out in the past year right. that are you know sub 100 level systems that, in, in general, they're more affordable. But yes, at this point, you're getting these to replace consoles from 25 years ago. Yeah, like you're you're now going okay. I have my 55 inch TV. How do I play my Super Nintendo on there? So there's really not a huge purpose of having analog out on anything, which is ironic, it's called analog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I believe 8-Bit Doe is doing all of the uh, controllers that match each system. Um, those are generally you know, quite high quality. People seem to enjoy them uh, a lot. So that should be a good pairing for the system. So overall, this is, the, the, I mean, I think this was definitely coming. Um, I think this will be incredibly popular at its price range. And yeah, if he, if, if he does jailbreak the the FPGA like he did with the first system, especially if you can go backwards and cover all that 8-bit stuff, you have... You have a theoretical HDMI system for... Almost literally every a, console a, up to the 16-bit era. Right. Like everything. As long as you can get 
the, the uh, as long as he has the cores developed for those systems, and you can get the ROMs on there. Mm, yeah, and it has an SD card slot, so, so that should be easy. So that's incredible. I'm glad they decided to ditch the high-end Cadillac aluminum shelves. It's like, you really don't need that. Like, you want to sell a small amount of these or a ton at a smaller price point. I wanted to lick one once, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> but after that, I did, I really didn't need it to be what it was. I just wanted a lot of licking, a lot of licking going on their podcast lately. Yeah. But this is sure the Harold did Atari box console. That was a different well, thing. That was a different. Entirely. Yeah, that was a different thing you want to put on that. Yep. Okay. But anyway, family friendly. So yeah, this is this is a, this is a great idea. Um, under two hundred dollars makes it. Almost a no-brainer, at least even someone like me. That not that I'm resistant to this, but I'm like, okay, I can see the need for this. And then yeah, and then if he decides to jailbreak it, and then throw all the other cores on it. You can play your Master System on here. Eventually, you can play your Sega Genesis games on here. I don't play 5200 games on it. Some crazy people can play 5200 games on here. If they can get controller support, why not? They can do that. <laughs> so it, it's very exciting, um, and. It, it, obviously, it's cheaper parts for the shell, but if it's affordable, I don't care. I'm saving two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars. I don't, I don't care. You know, just don't drop it on top of the house, and you should be fine. So, 1080p with zero lag, 720p would have been enough, but you know, you got 1080p. If you want to be fancy, we're we gonna have a 4K system at some point. Any ass? Why you looking like that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I caught you at a handsome angle. Uh, no, tell me not. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of weird. This angle, 38 degrees. Yeah. Let's read. Let's read some of their marketing materials. This is like no, because we've already said everything. A reimagining of perhaps the greatest video game system of all time. Whoa! Fight Wars, engineered with an FPGA, no emulation, 1080p, zero lag. Well, your TV will have a lag though. Total accuracy. The Super NT is not a plug-and-play toy. Ooh, shots fired. <laughs> it is the definitive way to explore Nintendo's 16-bit era. Compatible with the 2200-plus SNES and Super Famicom game cartridge library. Explore and relive one of the greatest video game systems of all time. you going to say it's water resistant. If only there was a book. If only there was a book to go along with the 2200. <laughs> it's exciting. I'm excited. I'm gonna get the Famicom one probably, Super Famicom one. And you're gonna say the translucent one? I, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I didn't say I was gonna get one. That, that's just the one that I would get. <laughs> Don't lie to these people. <laughs> you said you're gonna get one, I thought. No? Well, quick by the tape back. Who, who's the. Uh, no, no one's recording this. Um, so you do have 840p mode as well in 720p. Okay. Just in, case. okay. just in case you have an old HDMI CRT that, has, that exists, there's a few with 480p, I guess. I don't know. So anyway, that's all we got on this, I think. And the, and the controllers are quality. I've seen the uh, do controllers before. I was sent one at some point. So those are quality controllers. They're not just you know thrown in and cost a dollar. So no, that's exciting times. I think, I think our job's done. We can retire. Next generation is going to take the retro gaming scene and just move it forward for the kids. I see it here. It's beautiful. Eight-year-olds running around. Pikachu hats on. Luigi hats. Some say hi, Pat. Some say who that old man. That's a very embarrassing a lot. Where the fuck are you going? I don't know. I don't know. I am just extending this. It's just <laughs> family friendly. Family friendly. <laughs> You're getting a call right now. It's a work on trick. So is that all we got on this? Is that it? I mean, is this going to change the game? Is this going to sell a million? No. It's not going to replace the super. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. You have some hot takes out there that say, this is going to replace the Super Nintendo Classic. It's like, no, there's still two different markets. There's still two entirely different markets. So there's no games built in. Yeah, there were too many people comparing this to, you know, the... It's the killer. It's going to kill no, no, the no. Super Nintendo Classic. Dead. Train tracks driving over it. What? Maybe this is my... Oh, the train of thought? Uh, ah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. See how Pat does it? Uh, but no, it's not going to kill <laughs> What's this guy doing down here? I don't know, I'm telling you that you can refinance your house and make millions. Okay, Pat. 
So okay, so what are you gonna say? I don't remember. I, I, li I literally don't they're remember. They're different markets. Right. They're different markets because how many people out there have enough cartridges? Still, have, an average person has 30 cartridges to play. They're Super Nintendo enough to get this versus spending 80 bucks. Was that know. a pat poll? Like, did you just math? I just pulled it in my head. Okay. But we're we're in, a, we're in a biased environment. We're in a retro gaming convention. I'm talking about out there. Talking about Tacoma. And what else? What else is in the state? I don't know. Is that Washington? It's not in the state. What else? Uh, <laughs> what, what, what else is in Oregon? It's, it's not Oregon. What else is in Oregon? I'm trying to do local references. The ducks. The ducks are here, right? The ducks. Go ducks. And that'll save me. I know the local college team. But anyway, and now it's time for you're not. No, 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 I'm not done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna salvage this. It was fine until you no, went off the rails. You know you're not making it fine. You're making it more awkward than it had to be by over explaining it. So this is not a killer of the Super Nintendo Classic. Not at all. It's two different markets, and uh, there be some crazy people like me will probably buy both of these. Probably because you know what? There's no Star Fox Two on the what is this called? The Analog Super NT. <laughs> That's past hot take. Yeah, but that, that ROMs and nope. ROMs are bad, Ian. ROMs are bad. We were just talking about them. <laughs> we, I mean, that's what we were excited about. Were we? It's a course, right? A course. Course not a ROM though. You don't know how I'm getting that semi legal ROM on there. We play the games if you put them on the. You can't prove that in court. You don't know if I was condoning that or not. I don't know. I'm gonna pull the audience. Was Pat I don't think so. I don't know. Hoping the audio was usable. <laughs> because didn't record my phone, got it on the GoPro, though. It was probably okay. All right. If not, hey, look up some other links somewhere about it. But we can talk about something that was announced since Saturday. Was Very the, cool. The Super Turrican Director's Cut will be included digitally with the Super NT. And this is a version of the game... That has never, I guess, been released before, as far as I'm, as far as I know. Yes. Um, so the original Super Turrican was uh, it, due to a, a a size restriction at the time. Um, I'm going to assume because of the cost of uh, sure. um, physical storage at the time. Um, they had to cut out aspects of the game that they did not want to. Uh, the, the, the main aspect, uh, the main thing they cut out was. Um, the last level and uh, one of the bosses, and uh, the game ends kind of abruptly uh, on the Super Nintendo. Oh, so I didn't even know that. So it just it just ends. <clears throat> yeah, the ending is kind of abrupt because um, it's it's literally missing its last level. So that it adds in the um, I believe it adds back in the last level uh, the the missing boss, and then it uh, it says that it actually makes the graphics and sound a little bit better. And, and not as compressed as much? Yeah, it must not be as compressed because it's the full 6 megabit version now that they were planning on releasing before they had to squeeze it down to 4 megabits. Wow, so that's 50% larger uh, amount of space. So that's significant. Yeah, so I mean, um, Super, uh, I mean, Terrakin is a great series of running guns. It sort of has a very... Um, it's hard to explain, but a, 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 a Euro feel to it. It's a little bit different. It's a little less straightforward. It's a little bit more You explore open. a little bit more. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit more exploratory. You have the grappling thing. Um, is that, yes. And, I mean, it's a great game, and it should be awesome to see it in, you know, its intended uh, finished fashion. And they're going to do a Super Nintendo-style cardboard box to be include with that so you can pretend you have the game cartridge that's pretty neat that's a, i mean that's a little cute little bonus i mean not to re rehash what you hopefully heard with decent audio maybe maybe not but i th i think this is an extremely appealing uh and smart move by analog to have this a sub 200 cost on this to make it more affordable for everyone versus versus the the regular nt nes versions that are a little pricier to own well and this it, is this is crazy too because i'm just thinking about it not only are you getting a system, you're getting a pack-in game. I mean, that doesn't yeah. ha that doesn't happen too often anymore. That's that's smart. Nintendo won't do that anymore unless uh, you well, buy a bundle. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they they do it a lot of times, maybe with their handhelds. But I mean, yeah, but they're not full-fledged pack-ins. Well, sometimes they're. Um, but yeah, this is kind of neat that you know you get an actual, really good actually, um, Super Nintendo game, an enhanced version of it with it when you buy it. We're not just shilling this. Oh, I will probably get this. I was uh, thinking about getting the mini. 
uh, the mini NT, I probably would, I think, hold out and get this instead. Especially because of what we talked about in the what you hopefully heard with good audio. Um, <laughs> if, if this is jailbroken, then there's really... I mean, this should it's, be able to do everything this the, could the be, NT Mini does. Yeah, this could be playing every system, potentially, in theory, 16-bit backwards in time. Yep. That's incredible. That's a game changer. And an HDMI with upscaling. You want to play ColecoVision on your HDMI TV? There you go. Yeah. This is a viable solution versus somehow modding your ColecoVision. Has that ever been done, a modded ColecoVision? I'm trying to think about it. I've seen every old I'm console sure. modded. I'm, I'm trying sure to think. Hey, I want to play Dracula on a television for Halloween. An HDMI. Well, potentially next Halloween you can do it. I'm not, I'm not saying you can. I don't know. I don't know if he has an Intellivision core. Does he? Uh, Ketris is a genius. Maybe he does. Maybe he does. Probably. Sorry, anything else th to say on this? No. Go back to the bad audio. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're at a convention. What do you want me to do? Deal with it. <laughs>